Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. My name is Jim. You can find us at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Facebook, and our webpage, babyboomertales.com, and more. Well, one thing I've noticed about 2024 is I've noticed I'm aging. I talk about that once in a while, try to rally the troops, say it doesn't matter how old you are, it's all mental, that you can overcome physical ailments and things going on with your life, things that you cannot control, you can overcome by not succumbing to it, all that stuff, you know. But there's no bout to doubt it. Every day we wake up, we're just a little older. Every day. And we will have some aches and pains as we get older. I trust that most of my listening audience are baby boomers. But not all. I understand that. But if you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s or whatever, if you're fortunate enough, you will become an old person before you even know it. So I'm speaking to all of us. Why I'm even bringing this up is when my daughter and her family from Colorado visited us for Christmas, I think my daughter is feeling like I'm getting old. One morning, I slept a little later than usual. Usually, I get up before 6, but not always. And my goal in life is to sleep till 8 in the morning, and I accomplish that maybe once every couple months or something. I don't know. Not very often. I usually get up at five or six, sometimes earlier. I don't know. But anyway, I came walking out into the living room from our bedroom because I heard people talking. And I'd gotten up and gotten dressed and washed my face and that before I went out there. But I didn't stretch enough. And my right hip is kind of funky anymore. And it like from my right knee up to my hip until I get it stretched out. It's almost like I'm down in the back. And then after maybe an hour or something, I'm fine and I wouldn't know that at all. So I don't know if it's the way I sleep or my bed or my knee that I think has caused this. My right knee is kind of swollen always. Whatever, you know, it I just takes me a while to straighten up. And anyway, so I walked out into the living room and I was all kind of bent little, walking kind of weird. And I know she looked at me like, what the heck? And I am having a challenge with hearing anymore. And I'm saying, what, pardon me, what you say, speak up, or answered with a different answer than the question was, stuff like that, you know. And I think by the way I saw that she reacted is she thinks dad is just old and decrepit. And I'm not. I'm here to tell you I am not. But I'm older than I was yesterday. And I may have more battles to fight physically than last week or last year or last decade or, you know, last century. But I'm not going to let that get me down. And how my daughter or my grandchildren or my other daughter or whatever perceives me as, they're really not going to hear me saying, Oh, poor me, I hurt, I am just an old, decrepit man, I don't know how long I have. Oh, will someone take care of me? Please don't send me to a nursing home. All that stuff. Now, if your challenges are beyond what you can overcome and stuff like that happens, I'm not making fun or putting down or any of that. I'm not. I'm just telling you my battles. Because I'm getting older too. When Stevie Nicks sang that on the song Landslide, that I'm getting older too. Stevie Nicks getting older? I'm getting older too. You're getting older too. Getting older does not have to be a bad thing. I think it's quite fascinating actually what you go through and how you have to choose your battles and all this stuff. So speak to your body, speak to your mind, know that you are an overcomer 
Enough of that. I just wanted to say that 2024 is here. We're here together for the duration of whenever we're not. So let's have some fun while we're doing it. The sun goes up, the sun comes down. This old world keeps spinning around. Our song of the week is Cornerstone by Toby Mack and Zach Williams. It was recorded in 2022, written by Byron Fowler, Micah Cooper, and Toby McKeehan, or Toby Mack. This song itself, especially if you watch a YouTube video of it, kind of addresses what I was just talking about. Sun goes up and the sun comes down. This old world keeps spinning around. Watch the video. I think you'll be glad you did. The National Western Stock Show in Denver officially began in 1906. Prior to that, the Denver Bloodstock Fair began in 1874 and ran until 1906. What it was, was a showing of purebred cattle and five days of horse racing. Well, the National Western Stock Show has surpassed that somewhat. It is the number one stock show in the world. It's the largest one in the whole wide world. 1906, when it began, they set up a big tent at the stockyards and the National Western Stock Show was born. When I was a kid, one of the few things my dad really liked doing, going to an event, you know, was he packed the family up one Sunday morning every year in January and we would go to the Denver Coliseum where the National Western Stock Show was taking place. And we would walk around and look at some of the horses and the cows and whatever. Walk around the concourse there and see whatever they're trying to sell. Like harnesses and bridles and maybe saddles and all this stuff. The vendors out there in the concourse. And then we would go in and watch the rodeo. My dad always liked rodeos. In fact, he painted the original sign for the Flying Hills Rodeo in my little hometown. Well, being a 10 or 12 year old kid, going to the rodeo every year, I'd walk around that concourse and these vendors would have little TVs sitting there as they were waiting for someone to come and maybe look at their saddle blankets or whatever. And they'd be watching a football game. January was the time of the National Football League's playoffs. Even back when I was 12, before the NFL and the AFL merged, and I'd stand there and, Mom, Dad, you go on, I want to watch part of this game. And I'd stand there with, you know, several people gathered around that TV, little old, maybe 10-inch black and white portable TV with the rabbit ears on it, not great reception, and we'd watch some football. Well, my family would always come and get me and say, let's go into the rodeo now. But it's the fourth quarter, Dad. Doesn't matter. We have tickets to the rodeo. Rodeos are better than football anyway. My dad, I don't think, ever watched the entire football game in his life. He really didn't even care for football. And that was quite evident in my life. And when I played football in high school, I know he'd come and watch me maybe for a quarter, then go back to the store. I always thought his priorities were wrong. But I like to eat and have a roof over my head and clothes and stuff, so I'm not holding that against him. I just didn't understand it. But Mom was up in the stands watching, you know. So I'd have to go in and watch the rodeo. Now, I like rodeo fine. I like to go to rodeos today. They're a good time. They really are. But back then, 10, 12, 14, even 16-year-old boy would rather stand out there with a bunch of strangers looking at a little small black and white TV with not very good reception and see the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Colts 
have at it. I think the last year we ever went to the National Western, at least the last one I ever went to, I had to sit through the rodeo while the New York Jets beat the Baltimore Colts in the Super Bowl. Oh well, I'm not sure how many Super Bowls I've missed since that one. But they announced it there in the rodeo that the Colts had lost to the upstart Jets. Later, after I was married and had a family, I worked for Jay down there at the trading post. And the Western Ware market for retailers to go and gather and buy their goods from the wholesalers there at the Denver Merchandise Mart, it always coincided with the stock show because there's a huge Western market. And there we would buy 50, 60% of all our year's goods right there at the Western market. Justin boots and Stetson hats and snap-up shirts and boot-cut blue jeans, Pendleton blankets and Woolrich jackets. And it was quite a show and it was quite an experience. And Jay and I would basically buy everything we needed that we couldn't get from a vendor coming to the store and seeing us right there at that Western market. I can't remember if the market was before the National Western started or if it was scheduled to start right after the National Western ended. I cannot place it. It was always in January and the National Western Stock Show this year ran for about three weeks right in the middle of January. In fact, it's probably just got over. That was a wonderful experience, going, staying for a couple days down there in Denver, spending all the store's money, knowing that you had to do it right. You had to buy the right merchandise. The one thing Jay always taught me is just because I loved an item, like I love those boots, don't go buying a bunch of them because the public might not like them at all. And what maybe you don't like would be a staple bestseller at the store. It's all part of merchandising, and Jay was a master of teaching me how to do that. He was a very, very smart man that I learned 99% of all my business skills from. And those days at the Western Market are tucked away there in my heart that I like to visit every once in a while. Especially if I go into a Western type store anymore, I always compare it to the trading post. And you know what? There's never any comparison whatsoever. Well, today, the National Western Stock Show, they have a whole place just north of the old Denver Coliseum, across Interstate 70 there. They have a whole compound of buildings and arenas and exhibition halls just for that event. The only thing I can compare it to is here in Kansas City, they have the American Royal it is a little different. There is a great rodeo there. Kansas City has barbecue events there at the Royal. And it's still at the old Kemper Arena down in the stockyards. I had a wonderful childhood. And even though my dad did not care for sports, whatever, he let me participate in them and do what I had to do. And I still like watching football. Only today my TV is much larger in its color. And I sit in a recliner that I can adjust my neck or my lumbar and listen to it in stereo with a picture of I forget how many pixels. But I can see every detail on those football players' tattoos. Thank you, Dad and Mom, for taking John and Don and Janice and me down into Denver to a cultural event that I will never forget. My love and gratitude... I know it's not enough, but it's all I have, and I give it to you guys. I miss you very much. Thank you for riding along today. Remember to wake up each morning with a grateful heart and always be kind. I'll be back next Wednesday. Peace out.